Thank you, Ori. Nice to see a lot of familiar faces. See, see you guys in the back. Uh, I'm Jonas. I'm leading the Retro PGF effort at the Optimism Foundation. Uh, today, I want to tell you about retroactive public goods funding. Two years into it, what are we doing there? What have we done? What have we learned? What is coming next? This kind of thing. Um, a bit more than two years ago, we published this nice blog post called Retroactive Public Goods Funding together with Vitalik, where we outlined this core idea that it's easier to fund things based on how useful they've been in the past rather than funding things based on how useful they might be in the future. Who here has, has read this blog post? Hands up. Nice. Okay, who, who here thinks public goods are good? Okay, I, w I would have been shocked if this was something different at funding the commons. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into, into the details of why public goods are good. I think you guys know this. Um, but just outlining the core problem statement that we see at Optimism that we're tackling. Which is one, public goods are good, but we're missing sustainable funding for them. And then even if we have sustainable funding for them, we don't really know how to effectively allocate resources towards them. How we solve this thing is this beautiful flywheel at the core of what we do at Optimism, which is Optimism is this beautiful, beautiful roll-up solution, uh, building the super chain, a collection of layer twos that talk to each other. And there we have this beautiful OP block space. This is block space on OP mainnet. This is block space on other super chains like Base or Zora. Um, and every time you transact on these networks, the sequencer generates revenue from this. Part of this revenue is then dedicated towards funding public goods that are relevant to optimism. So this is how we get sustainable funding. We take part of the transaction fee and dedicate it towards public goods funding. You, you could call it taxation, but that wouldn't be as sexy, right? Um, we take this and we dedicate it towards retroactive public goods funding. And what we expect to happen there is that these public goods that are funded bring more value to users and builders on optimism. So this means more educational content, more onboarding tools, more useful tools for developers, nicer wallets, um, all the nice public goods infrastructure you rely on when you interact on these networks. And this creates this beautiful flywheel. Then we should see more demand for block space. Um, then we should have more funding for public goods, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this long, long name that we have for this mechanism, retroactive public goods funding, what it's really about is um, creating an incentive machine. So what we really want to do is incentivize the creation of the goods and services that the Optimism Collective finds useful needs and wants. Um, so the goal here really is that we do these retro PGF reward rounds over and over again so they become so predictable that if you build something useful, you know you will receive these rewards and they drive behavior. Uh, at Funding the Commons, you might have heard of the Impact Evaluator Framework by Protocol Labs. Um, all these concepts are pretty much the same thing. So retroactive funding is the same thing as retrospective funding, same thing as Impact Evaluators. Pretty much, I hope, I hope the Protocol Labs people are not upset. Hulk is putting his thumb up. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's signed off. Uh, it's all the same trip. And it's not a new idea. Um, so we often like to come around with our novel concepts and be like, we invented something net new. Um, but this is really not the case. Uh, we're taking an existing concept and we're trying to apply it at a new scale to fund public goods that are relevant to these digital ecosystems. Who here uses Spotify? All right. So if you use Spotify, you're part of 
we, we, have, we have a late hand as well. Uh, if you use Spotify, you're part of this retroactive funding system or this impact evaluator. So putting, putting, putting ads on Spotify aside, just assume there's only subscription fees. Um, Spotify pays out the owners of songs based on how many streams they get. So what this is in effect is you measure the usefulness or the impact of the songs based on the number of streams the songs receive, and you retroactively pay out the owners of the songs um, on this, based on this measured impact. And they do this over and over again so that you know if you create a song that receives a lot of streams, you will receive these rewards after the fact, after they received all these streams. Um, not saying this is a pretty good system, like artists are not really getting paid there, but it's an example of a retroactive funding mechanism that you are interacting with on the daily. If you think of any repeated prize competition that you're participating in, be it like hackathon prizes, be it academic prizes that are repeated, they do the same thing. Uh, they retroactively reward some, some type of behavior or some accomplishment, and they do this over and over, so it's predictable that if you participate in this hackathon um, and you build something useful, you can expect to win a hackathon prize. So what we're doing at Optimism is, or, or also what, what Protocol Apps is doing with Impact Evaluators, is taking this existing concept and try to apply it at a new scale to fund the public goods relevant to these digital ecosystems. And, and we're actually doing it. We're actually doing it. This is not like a concept we're, we're scratching out on paper. Um, but we're running a lot of experiments to figure this out. Uh, I think with these, uh, with these systems that want to drive behavior, uh, theory is always super sexy, and it's really nice to look at a paper and read through it and be like, oh my god, this is such a great idea. Um, but shipping it to the real world can be quite different. And I think the best way to understand how your, how your system drives behavior is to actually put it out in the real world and see what happens. So we're on to the third round of retroactive public goods funding. It's, it's happening towards the end of this year. The sign up for projects is gonna li go live soon. Um, and this is after, after two, two experiments before. And in each one, we, learn, we learned a lot. Um, in the first round, which we did uh, towards October 2021, we had a million dollars of sequencer revenue that we dedicated to it. There were 58 projects. This was like extremely manual. Everybody could suggest a project via a Google form. And we had 21 voters that decided on allocating this funding among the projects. And we learned an interesting thing. We learned a bunch of things, but the most interesting thing was um, this idea of impact equals profit. Uh, often when we talk about public goods, um, we want to define public goods more closely, uh, and then we get into this four by uh, two by two grid, if it's like a public good, or a common good, or a club good, or a private good, and then you're like pointing at this thing, and you're like, no, Etherscan is not a public good and it's a really not helpful discussion to what you actually try to achieve. So what we figured out is we actually want to reward things that are impactful to optimism. Um, and we want to ensure that whatever impact you generate for, generate for this collective is rewarded with proportional profit. And so the idea here is you don't need to build um, things that, are, that are follow the public goods definition closely. You could have something uh, that has ads or a freemium model, and if your impact that you're generating with this thing exceeds the income you're able to generate from your, your profit extraction, you should still receive these rewards to balance out this ratio. That is the core idea we found there. Then we did another round. Um, we, we took some time, one and a half years later, we ran round two. Uh, this ended in March of this year we had 10 million OP tokens, almost 200 projects, 71 voters, um, and we learned that we should collect more data on impact and profit. So we, we wanna move away from this popularity contest 
where you vote on the things that you know about and you care about, or you vote on the things that your friend is working on. But we really want to drive towards something where we're able to measure impact predictably. Um, and we, we make this a data-driven exercise. And uh, a really simple thing is like ask projects better questions um, and collect better data sources uh, on their impact. So we're taking these learnings, a bunch of other learnings that we had as well. We're running round three. Uh, it's going to happen soon. I'm going to tell you a bit about it later. Um, and we're looking to run these experiments uh, as fast as we can. Currently, we do them at a six-month iteration cycle. How do we know this thing is working? So we could, we could pay out all the rewards that we wanted to, um, and nothing happens. So what we want to try to understand is how is this thing driving behavior? How are people, are people building new things because they know these rewards will be, uh, will be allocated in the future? So that's what we're trying to see. And we found devastating things. We asked projects if they did something because they expected to receive these rewards in the second round. And then 96% of projects said, no, they didn't do anything because they expected these rewards. 24 out of 25 people that we asked didn't expect this. They were super happy, obviously. They got these OP tokens, but they, they didn't do things specifically because they expected um, these retro PGF rewards. But then we asked them if they're doing something now with the expectation of receiving these rewards in the future. There we got a different answer which is 45% of projects that we interviewed are building something now with the expectation of receiving retro PGF rewards for it in the future. And this actually shows the effect of running this retro funding mechanism um, predictably and often. So it becomes this super regular cadence, and we build trust with the projects that they know if they build something impactful, after the fact, they will receive these rewards. People are building cool stuff. Uh, we have new tutorials, new Solidity tutorials, uh, new crypto wallets for devs. Um, Ethereum Mexico is saying they are doing more initiatives for builders and are doing more meetups. Uh, this is all exciting stuff. And so now we're on to the next round. Here we go again. Uh, we're going to do the sign up. It's going to launch in about two weeks. And then we're going to do the voting towards November. You're going to hear about the results in early January. And uh, if I had to put a major theme on this round, what we're trying to do here is move from vibes-driven voting and rewarding of behavior towards a data-driven future. So this is uh, a slide from Carl uh, from Open Source uh, Observer. And this fits into what protocol labs are outlining in their impact evaluator paper. Um, this thing is so pixelated because protocol labs um, put it as pixelated in their paper. I think we should call them out on it. Um, what they're outlining here is this idea that you have a spectrum of how subjective or objective your impact evaluator, so your reward function is. And currently, we're in this land of full subjective expert mode. We have these voters. They give us their full subjective take on how impactful, how useful something has been. Uh, and we want to move a bit more to the left. So if you imagine a Spotify type system, that's like a closed quantitative system. That's like the other end of the spectrum. Don't think we want to go as far as that, but we want to slowly move to the left of this, of this graphic. And we're doing a bunch of things based on the learnings we had in round two. Um, so we're improving the project signup. It was super painful last time for projects. Um, we're shipping this new vote delegation tool called Lists so we can scale how many projects are evaluated in these rounds, hopefully to hundreds or thousands of projects in the future. Um, we're putting out new frameworks and definitions for impact evaluation. So we want to define this thing called impact more closely so it becomes more predictable and voters know what to do. And we're launching some sick voting applications 
So the batch holders, these are the voters in these rounds, have a good experience reviewing all these projects. When I say we, these are all kinds of people that come together uh, and build with us on this. Um, so this is the folks from OP Labs, obviously, but also Super Modular, Agora. We have uh, Open Source Observer, a project coming out of Protocol Labs that is building like a super sick analytics tool. Uh, Pairwise, which uh, is a Pairwise comparison voting method. Um, Biddle Guild is doing some fun experimentation uh, on building front ends for voting. And if, if you want to join us, you, you can come experiment with us. Uh, if you have something that you think like this would be sick to build or this could be useful, um, we're, we're super open to ideas. I think what we really want to do is do a bunch of experiments and learn as much and as fast as we can. If you're looking for ideas of things that might be interesting to explore, we have this beautiful repo called Ecosystem Contributions. There you can find a bunch of ideas that we outline of things that would be cool to build. Um, you can also hit, hit me up on Telegram or, or find me here. Um, David's laughing. This is, uh, this, is, this is Berlin, but Sunny edited into Berlin. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Build for the public good. Help summon Ethers Phoenix. Um, how to summon Ethers Phoenix is build public goods and contribute towards uh, making RetroPGF effective and stay, stay, stay optimistic. Thank you, guys. Yeah.